everybody, it is Rachel here with Yarn It Play Crochet. So today I'm going to do a tutorial for you on how to create an amigurumi ball. Now if you've watched any of my in-depth yarn reviews, these should look familiar to you because I swatch up every single yarn that I review into an amigurumi ball just so that you can see how it works up if you were to use it for any kind of amigurumi project. Um, this technique is also great for home decor projects um, or just knowing how to work in a spiral. Um, with those tight little stitches and how to get your balls to work out exactly right. So we're going to go over the basic techniques here um, in this tutorial. I am planning on doing a um, tips and tricks or best practices video for a basic amigurumi um, ball as well. But let's just stick to the basics for this video. But if that is something that you're interested in, be sure to subscribe so that you are able to see it when it comes available. What you're going to need for this is you're going to need some yarn, you're going to need a hook, and you're going to need a stitch marker. Now the yarn that I'm using here is Saver from Ice Yarn. This is a for worsted weight yarn but it is definitely a thick worsted weight yarn and so um, if I was just stitching this up traditional crochet style I would use either a six and a half or a seven millimeter crochet hook but because I am stitching this up amigurumi style I am going to be using a four millimeter crochet hook. So that is your first thing that you need to know with amigurumi and if you're working up things um, amigurumi style is you always want to use a significantly smaller crochet hook than your yarn calls for. That's what's going to give you that really tight stitch and those that really good stitch definition. It's kind of hard to see here on this one because of the yarn that I used. But it's definitely going to give you the look that you're going for and you won't be able to see your stuffing through your ball. I think that's one of the first things that people need to know when they start doing this is make sure that you're using um, a significantly smaller hook so that you don't get any stuffing peeking through. So we're going to start doing our amigurumi ball using a magic ring. Now if you do not know how to do a magic ring, please look up in the cards over there and I will have my separate tutorial that I did on how to create a magic ring up there for you because that is a basic technique that you are going to need to know. You can't just do a chain ring to start because then you can't tighten it down and get that really close, tight, small, closed off hole in the top of your ball. You do need to know how to ma do a magic ring. I promise once you do it a couple times, you should be able to get it. It's not as scary as it seems. So I'm going to go ahead and show you slow one time, but if you need more, please go check out that other video. So you're going to lay your tail across your hand here. You're going to pinch it just like this with your thumb and ring finger. Separate your fingers a little bit. Wrap the yarn between so you make an X and then bring the yarn behind and kind of tuck it between your ring finger and your pinky. So it should look like this on your hand, okay? Then you're going to poke your hook up underneath this one. So the, the back yarn, you're going to poke your hook up under that. Catch the yarn that's on top and pull it through and then kind of wiggle it so it sits like that. And then slide it off your fingers. Grab your working yarn, not your tail, and chain one to secure your magic ring. Now you're good to go. Your yarn isn't going to fall off your magic ring because you got that chain right there securing it. And I can tighten this down as I need to. But we're going to start there and we're going to start by working into this big hole here that we just made, our magic ring. So to start, you're going to want to do six single crochet stitches into your magic ring here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that is what it should look like. You can see how tight those stitches are. They are very tight together, but they shouldn't be so tight that you can't stick your hook through the stitches when we come back around. Otherwise, you're going to get a sore hand really fast. So once we get our six um, single crochet on our magic ring, grab your tail and just pull it to snug that up and give it a good pull. You want to make sure that you're using a yarn that has some strength to it so that it doesn't break on you or fall apart 
I mean, you don't have to like really, really, really pull as hard as you can because then you will break your yarn no matter what yarn you're using. But you just want to make sure that it's nice and tight. You see, nothing's getting through that little hole. It shrinks it down completely. And if I were to try to poke my hook through there, I wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, so that's a nice, tight little magic circle. Now with amigurumi, you do not work in the round. You work in a spiral which means that we are not going to be joining our first row here and then chaining one and then going around. That's how you traditionally work in a round. You connect your rows and then you chain however many you need and then you connect, continue your next round and then you connect your rows and then you chain however many you need and continue around. Working in a spiral, you work just as if um, your row never stopped which is why we're using a stitch marker, because when you're doing your counts in your amigurumi, you have to know what your first stitch is. Um, and there's no way around it, you have to use a stitch marker. Otherwise, you will lose your count, you will get lost in your pattern, and your projects will not look right. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to, you can kind of see how, hopefully this yarn will show you, there's a gap there. I'm pulling that gap apart so that you can see it. But, this right here, that's my chain, my chain one that I did. And these two loops right here, that is my first single crochet. This is gonna be the only time where it's hard to find the start of your next row. From here on out, you will have your stitch marker and you will do just fine. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could have put your stitch marker in at the beginning so you knew what the first stitch was. I didn't do that because I'm so used to doing this that I can see it pretty easily. Um, but if that's an issue, you can always do that. Now it's not gonna, it's gonna be over a little bit. It's not gonna be kind of where you think it's supposed to be right here. It's gonna be over a little bit. So go ahead and do two single crochet into that first stitch, but we're gonna start by just doing one. So there's our first single crochet of our second row. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker And I'm going to pop it right into that stitch right there. And you can use anything for a stitch marker. I just got these in the mail today from um, a crochet friend here on YouTube, a curious cuttlefish. Go check out her channel if you want to go see what she's up to. Um, but uh, so that's why I'm using this one, but you can use anything. I even just use a bobby pin. Um, it works really well. So use whatever you need to for a stitch marker. Don't feel like you have to have the fancy plastic stitch markers or a pretty one like this. You can just use a bobby pin if you need to. So there's our first stitch marked. And now in the same stitch, you're going to do another single crochet and you're going to single crochet two times into every stitch all the way around. So you're doing a single crochet increase into every single stitch, all six stitches, all the way around. So into your next one you do two, one, two, and two into your next one, one, two, and two into your next one, one, two, and two into your next one, one, two, and into your last stitch here, one, and two, oops. So that is two rows done, and that is what it should look like. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out and now for our next row what we're going to do is we're going to do single crochet single crochet increase so one stitch two stitches one stitch two stitches one stitch two stitches and that's going to be the pattern all the way around so we're continuing to increase so that our circle keeps getting bigger and so that is how we're going to work it. So uh, one stitch, two stitches, and they're all going to be single crochet stitches. So one single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet. And we're going to do that all the way around. So do your first stitch. Pop 
Pop your stitch marker back in there so you don't lose it. And then start working your way around. So that was our first. So then in the next one, we're going to do our single crochet increase. So two, one, two, and then a single crochet, single crochet increase, one, two in the same stitch, and then one single crochet in the next, two single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next, two single crochet, and one, and two, and one, had to double check where my stitch was there, and two, And that will bring you to the end of your third row. So we're going to get started on our next row here. So pop your stitch marker out and do your first single crochet. Put your stitch marker back in. Always do it right away, otherwise you'll forget. I can't tell you how many times I'm like, oh, I won't forget. I'm just going to do a few stitches and then I forget. And then I'm having to count my stitches back and trying to track it down, and it's very difficult. All right. So for this round, um, where the pattern is going to be two single crochet and then an increase, two single crochet and an increase. So we're just increasing the amount of stitches between our increases every row that we go out. And that will give us a nice flat circle, which is what we are trying to go for. So we just did our first single crochet, so do your second one into the next stitch and then do your single crochet increase so two into the next stitch one two and then one single crochet into the next two stitches and then your single crochet increase which is two in the same stitch and then two single crochet into the next st two stitches. And then do a single crochet increase. So two in the same stitch. And then two single crochet. And then a single crochet increase. two single crochet single crochet increase two single crochet and then you're ending your last stitch as you have with your other rows with a single crochet increase So there you go. And we're going to keep doing that with each stitch or each row all the way around. So on the next round, we're going to have three single crochet and then an increase, three single crochet and then an increase, three single crochet and an increase, three single crochet and an increase. And you can keep doing that for however wide you want your ball to be in diameter. So you could make a giant one, you can make a tiny one. Um, you just keep adding that formula until the base of your circle is as big as you want it to be. I don't want to make this huge, so I'm probably going to do two more rows. And then I'm going to start forming the sides of my um, ball. So I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to do my next two rows. So my next row is going to be three single crochet and an increase. And then the next row after that is going to be four single crochet and an increase. And then when I'm done with those two rows, I'll meet you back here and I'll show you what the next part is. 
Okay, so I actually just did my last row and I decided to do it um, just after that last row that I did. So I did three single crochet increase and that's the row that I'm going to stop it on because this is big enough for what my purpose is here. So what we're going to do now to start um, curving our walls up, take your stitch marker out, um, is we're just going to do uh, single crochet all the way around. And we're just going to keep doing that and that's going to form the um, sides of our ball until you get it to be the the height that you want it to be and then we're going to start decreasing in and then we're going to stuff so i'm going to just do a bunch of rows of single crochet don't forget to keep your stitch marker just because you're doing all single crochets all the way around doesn't mean that you get to stop using your stitch marker. You still need your stitch marker. So you got to move that stitch marker into the first stitch of each row every single row. So to start making the sides of our, our ball, we're just going to do one single crochet into every single stitch all the way around. No increasing, no decreasing just single crochets all the way around until the sides of your ball are the height that you want them to be. Now the first row or two just doing single crochet all the way around you might feel like you're not building walls <laughs> to your ball but you are. Um, it just might depending on the yarn you're, that you're using or your tension or how tight your stitches are it might take a second to look like you're actually curving inward. But if you've ever made a top down beanie, anything like that, the, this is the exact same concept. Um, you're just doing very tight stitches with a significantly smaller crochet hook than your yarn suggests that you use. And you're just doing it um, in the spiral instead of in the round. So um, that's the difference between those two terms, between the spiral and the round. So amigurumi is worked in a spiral. And um, top down beanies, things like that are worked in the round. Um, the reason why you don't work in the round on amigurumi and you work in a spiral is because no matter how clean of a join that you have, where your rows would connect in a round, you're still gonna see it on your amigurumi project. And so working in a spiral just eliminates that join, and so you don't have any seaming on your amigurumi. So there is one row down of single crochet all the way around, and then just keep on going until you have the height that you want here. And every ball is a little bit different. I don't actually follow any kind of pattern or set like row counts when I make my swatches for my in-depth yarn reviews. I just kind of eyeball it. Um, if you are working from a pattern, you definitely want to follow the patterns written instructions so that your counts are correct and so you don't have a misshapen um, amigurumi project. But if you're just doing like... Christmas ornaments or something like that and you just want to make a bunch of baubles and a bunch of balls um, once you kind of understand the basics of the technique you don't have to have a set um, stitch count and for how many increases you do for the width you can just kind of make it however big or small you want it to be and then when you start going up you don't have to have a set amount of rows because obviously the wider you make your base out in order for it to look like a circle the more rows that you're going to have to do up for that to make an actual ball shape otherwise you're just going to make like a funny flat pancake oval thing if your diameter is really big but you only do like 10 rows it'll look like that it'll look like a flying saucer um <laughs> so you just kind of have to Work it up and, and, and kind of decide for yourself how big you want it to be if you're not following an exact pattern. But I'm going to keep doing this. I will um, meet you back when I feel like I have my walls for my little ball here high enough. And I will show you how to start doing the decreases. Okay, so I've worked several rows up with just single crochet all the way around. And as you can see, I've got the walls of my ball pretty well finished. Um, I always kind of want the height to be a pretty close match to the diameter um, and that will get me a pretty round um, ball. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to start decreasing. And I stopped um, 
down here, when I started doing my single crochet rows, the repeat I was on was three single crochet and then an increase. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna put that right up here and we're gonna start doing three single crochet and then a decrease. So whatever you wind up ending on, make sure you take note of that, write it down or something. So if you wind up doing um, more, so you say like add eight single crochet and then an increase and that's the last row that you do before you start working your rows up, you're going to want to remember that number eight because that's how many stitches you're going to have to do when you get to the when you're done making the walls of your ball you want to be able to do eight single crochet and then a decrease all the way around so since i ended with a three single crochet and then an increase i'm going to start my next row with a three single crochet and a decrease so i'm going to work my three single crochet here don't forget your stitch marker or you will be sad and frustrated. So there's one, here's two, and here's three. And now I'm going to show you how to do an uh, invisible decrease. So to do an invisible decrease, what you do is instead of like a standard decrease, you would do poke your thing through, then you pull up a loop, put your hook through, pull up a loop so you have three, and then you decrease like that. That's not how we're decreasing. We're going to decrease differently because it'll be much more invisible. It'll show significantly less on your work, and so your ball will look very, very seamless. So what you're going to do is on those little stitches there, I'm going to put my hook through the front loop of the first stitch and I'm not going to yarn over and pull up a loop. I'm going to go straight into the front loop of the next stitch and then I'm going to yarn over, pull through both of those stitches. Why am I catching? I promise it's not as hard as this. It's because I'm filming so it's going to look difficult. There we go. So it'll look like that when you've pulled through both. You have two on your hook, then you yarn over and just finish your single crochet. Now I'm going to do three more stitches. One, two, three, and then I will show you that decrease again. So put your hook through the front loop only of your next stitch, and then through the front loop only of that second stitch, yarn over, pull through both loops, yarn over, and pull through both loops. And that is how you do an invisible decrease. So I'm going to keep doing that every three stitches all the way around on this row. Front loop only, front loop only, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And keep doing that with the same sequence, however many you need to do single crochet and then decrease until you get back to your first chain and then I will meet you there. So we did our three single crochet decrease all the way around and we should have ended our previous row with a decreased stitch right here. And so we're going to start our next round around and this time we are going to do two single crochet and then a decrease all the way around to keep that stitch count correct. So that was my first single crochet. Here's my second one. And then we're going to do our invisible decrease, so front loop only, front loop only, yarn over, and then pull through both loops. And then we're going to do that all the way around, two single crochet, and a single crochet decrease until we get back around to our stitch marker. 
So I just finished my row of two single crochet and then a single crochet decrease all the way around. And now my hole is starting to close up. So what I'm going to do, since this is such a small sample, is I'm going to go ahead and start stuffing. You don't want to wait until your hole is so small that you have to use a pencil or something really tiny to shove stuffing in. Because when you're stuffing um, any project that you're doing, you always want to err on the side of overstuffing than understuffing. Um, and you always want to stuff more than you think that you need. Um, so you might feel like you are shoving tons of air and just cramming it in like nothing more is going to fit. But you really want to make sure that you have really jammed it full uh, because it will loosen up and soften up over time. Um, now, not some projects require really, really hard stuffing, um, and some projects require looser stuffing, but I would always say stuff more than you think that you're going to need. Um, it doesn't mean that it has to be hard as a rock, but I would definitely err on the side of over stuffing rather than under stuffing. And you can see, you can get a lot of stuffing into this little ball. And I'm still... I'm still pretty squishy here. Um, so you might be a little bit surprised as to how much stuffing you actually use in one of these little projects. Let's see. It's getting close. I still might put just a smidge more in there. Just so that it's nice and solid. There we go. And that's got good firmness to it. And I'm not going to have to put anything else in there as this hole gets smaller because that'll just fill up in on the top. So you can see we have a nice little a nice little ball forming here. So now we're going to keep doing our decreased rows around. So put your loop back on your hook. And we just finished our row with two single crochet decreases, or two single crochet and then a decrease. And so on this next row, we're just going to do one single crochet and decrease, and that's going to be our pattern all the way around. So here is my first single crochet, and this gets a little tricky. I to help me when I have it stuffed and I'm getting in this tiny, tight little space, it helps me to stick my finger kind of tucked into it a little bit. It just kind of helps me keep my yarn um, where I want it to go and more manageable, but everybody does it a little bit different. Um, and I am just one person, but that tends to be how I do it. So make sure you put your stitch marker in. You need it the whole time. And I'm going to do my decrease. I'm going to shove my finger in there. And I'm going to do my front loop only. And then my next one, front loop only, yarn over, pull through both, yarn over, pull through two. And then with these, because I have that stuffing in there and it wants to pull the stitches apart a little bit more and stretch those stitches out, um, I do tend to kind of snug them down a little bit in this section while I am working on getting my um, amigurumi ball closed up. And the more you stuff, the trickier it'll be in this part, but it's worth it being a little bit tricky in the long run because you will get used to working in this little tricky section and then you're going to have some really nice um, well-stuffed projects that uh, lasts for a really long time and keep their shape really nicely. Some of the first um, amigurumi projects that I did, I did not stuff well enough and they just did not hold their shape very well. 
Um, and mine were, I mean, it's not like they were just sitting on my shelf. My kids got a hold of them and they played them with them and they slept with them and they loved on them. And, um, anything that, you know, you make that gets that kind of use and abuse, um, is going to show wear and tear. But I have found that the more I stuff, the less wear and tear, um, shows up on my projects. They tend to be a bit more durable and to hold their shape a little bit better. So I'm going to keep working on this until I get to the stitch marker and I will meet you there. All right, we are very nearly done with our little amigurumi ball here. Take your stitch marker out. And now our pattern is going to be a decrease all the way around. So we, our last row, we did a single crochet and then a decrease. This time we're going to do decreases on every single stitch all the way around. So do your first stitch here. One front loop only, front loop only. Oop, got a little stuffing on my hook there. Yarn over. Pull through those two, yarn over. And pull through two. And I'm going to put my stitch marker back into my first stitch. Hook it this way. I think that'll work a little better. There we go. And now we do a decrease on the next one. So front loop only. Got stuffing on my hook again. That's the part of the fiddly bit there. There we go. Front loop only. Yarn over. And pull through two. Yarn over and pull through. Front loop only on two stitches. Pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Front loop only on the next two stitches. Yarn over, pull through both. Yarn over, pull through both. And then this is our last two stitches here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stitch marker out. Because I don't need that anymore. Because this is my last stitch of the ball. So front loop only. Front loop only, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So when you're all done, it's going to look like this on the top. So go ahead and uh, cut your yarn. And pull your strand all the way through. Oh, did I? I did not. Sorry. You want to do chain one and then pull your yarn all the way through. Sorry. Chain one, pull your yarn all the way through. Just like that. And snug that down. And then I am going to grab a yarn needle and show you how to get this little bit sewed up so you have a nice, perfect, round little ball. So when you cut your yarn, you want to leave yourself a nice long tail um, because you're going to be using this tail to sew up this little hole here. So go ahead and get a darning needle or a yarn needle or whatever you use to weave in your ends and thread your needle. I got these little yarn threaders on Amazon. Really inexpensive and really helpful, especially for those itty bitty eyes because this one has an itty bitty eye on it. So what you're gonna do to get this all closed up and nice is that you're gonna start right here and just stitch top and then through the hole 
loosely all the way around. You're not going to tug it down tight yet. So just make sure that it's secured, but don't like pull on it yet. So through the stitch, up through the hole, through the next stitch, up through the hole, through the next stitch, up through the hole, And you should be left with a total of six stitches to run your yarn through. So once you've gone through every single one of those just loosely, what you're going to do is you're just going to pull on your yarn and pull that hole nice and tight. Now again, you want to have a nice sturdy yarn. Um, so that you don't break your yarn because it's going to take a little bit of muscle to get that nice and tight. And then once you have that hole all closed up and it's nice and flat and even looking, what you're going to do is you're going to um, weave in your ends and tie off in the same way. So I just stab it through and then I have my uh, needle come up in a gap because you're going to be running it through um, your ball several times, or at least I do. So have your needle come up in between us in a stitch gap and pull it down tight. You don't have to like ream on it because if you really pull on it, it's going to pull your center of your ball down like that. So you don't have to pull down really tight. You're just running it through the ball. And then once I get it on the side here, what I do is I tie a knot in the yarn as close as I can get it to the ball here. So you have a little knot in your yarn. And then I just run this back through again through the stuffing into a little gap, stitch gap out the other side. And then pull so that knot goes into your ball. Oh, it looks like I caught some yarn there. So don't do what I did and don't catch yarn. Because if you catch your yarn, then it'll pull a dimple. But it looks like it's still hidden, so it turned out okay. Um, but you really want to do be careful to try and get your yarn in a gap and not through your yarn like I did. But I'm using a very pointy needle, that's why. Usually I would use a much more blunt needle for this, but I just couldn't find one. So for this last pass through, I'm not being careful about coming up between a stitch because this is my last pass through and I don't have to have it go inside the ball. And then, sorry, I have a giant knife here for this. You just cut your yarn and the end of your yarn goes in your ball. And then I kind of just squeeze it a little, make sure that it's nice and round. And that is all there is to it. So if you are new to amigurumi and you made an amigurumi ball, you've mastered most of the basic amigurumi techniques. Um, that's really going to be the most difficult thing that you have to learn how to do is how to shape stuff and create uh, 3D images using uh, crochet. Now, uh, if I were doing a uh, stuffed animal or something out of this, I would have to create, you know, if there were ears, I'd have to create ears, a body. A lot of times you can re have patterns where they do the body and the head all at once so you don't have to sew them together. I always kind of like those patterns. Um, it's less sewing for me. That's my least favorite part of any amigurumi project is sewing all the pieces together. So if I find projects where there's not a lot of sewing together, I always appreciate that. But this is the basics of it. Um, 
If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give this video a like. Um, that is something that really goes a long way to getting these videos in front of more faces so more people can join our little online community here. And um, if you are interested and would like to see more tutorials, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight, guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.